and for the most egregious ah! given throwing Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black ah! off the roof of WWE HQ. Now look, obviously Black and Mysterio landed on a pile of cushy marshmallows down below, but this was still attempted murder. Worst off, this wasn't treated as a serious angle. Mysterio and Black were perfectly fine the next day. <laughs> Y'all don't understand how funny that is, bro. I didn't ever watch this match live. I didn't care to. But just seeing the clips, I was like, wait, did, did Baron Corbin just kill Rey Mysterio? <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So I'm going to check out 10 most unrealistic WWE moments. We've seen it time and time and time again where you just, you just watch something and you're just like, that didn't look good. That 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 obviously uh <laughs> was fake. Um they could have did something else. Um you guys remember that extreme rules match. I think this is during the pandemic era, uh, between Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins, the eye for eye match, one of the worst like endings to a match. They used a fake eyeball. As if his uh as if Ray's eye was being popped out. And then Ray was wrestling weeks after with like his mask, but it would have a, a black like like the eye hole would be patched out black. It was just it was just weird and, and now he's he's back to normal. So Yep. <laughs> never forget, guys. <laughs> never forget. There's some very uh interesting things that have happened in wwe over the past we're gonna check this out i'm pretty sure that that has to be in this video it's part of the damn thumbnail i believe it is part of the thumbnail let me check yes it is it better be in this video all right let's check this out man wwe number one drop 20 feet from a forklift now vince mcmahon has a oh. thing with cars an attempted vehicular manslaughter mm -hmm. but the ending to the triple h versus stone cold steve austin match was a bit head scratching Visually, it was cool to see Triple H pushed up in the air by a forklift and drop 20 feet. And to be fair, Stone Cold had a justified reason to commit, well, murder, as Triple yeah. H did run over the former WWE champion. Now, realistically speaking, Triple H should have been dead. And granted, <laughs> we're not an expert on being dropped 20 feet from a forklift, but there's no way in hell Triple H could have survived such a fall. At the very least, he should have been severely injured. But you know what's worse than the fall itself? The match just ended without any result. Yep. This was a no DQ match. All of this was legal. Why were the WWE League fans hanging by simply ending the match without a firm conclusion? He killed In the him. moment, <laughs> this was an exciting spectacle. But once the adrenaline rush of seeing Triple H murdered ends, you'll realize how badly booked that ending really was. <laughs> Number two, Kane goes crashing through a booth. A confession time. We enjoyed the Shane and Kane feud. Mm -hmm. It was ridiculous, over the top, and bloody good fun. But it's nah, the feud was just, just ultimate carnage, just craziness. That this new sick version of Kane was entertaining to watch. I mean, this segment right here. This was wild. Like. This is live torture, essentially, bro. This is this was wild. I'm not gonna lie to you, bro. <laughs> Hard to ignore some of the most unbelievable moments throughout this feud. And we can't cover every single thing, but we can recall their infamous ambulance match. Despite the build, Shane and Kane's matches were mostly grounded and realistic. However, the purpose of this feud was to put Kane over as a monster. Yeah. Shane backing a truck into Kane that sent him smashing through a security booth wasn't a surprising moment. A WWE is no stranger to hit and runs, but it rarely happens during a match. Given the nature of this rivalry, this moment is tame compared to Kane falling into a dumpster of uh -huh. fire or Shane's balls being electrocuted. But that doesn't make this moment any less believable. Number three, zombie lumberjack match. You knew this had to be on here. It, I, that, that was another match that, uh, you know, happened during the, the pandemic era. And they were trying some things. Some of the stuff that they were trying back then worked. And then there was stuff like this that just uh, never again. What in the hell was this? Damian Priest was coming off a hot match with Bad Bunny and this killed some of his momentum and none of it was his fault. WWE got paid to advertise Zack Snyder's Army of Dead and instead of a casual logo or even a backstage segment promoting the film, yeah. Vince McMahon came up with a brilliant idea to advertise this Netflix movie in the middle of the Miz vs Damian Priest feud. This wasn't a tongue-in-cheek moment. This zombie attack was treated as a serious thing. Yeah. The company was lucky that this match took place during the pandemic era because this would have been booed out of the building live. This the whole awful, thing was bro. absurd and took it out of the action between the Miz awful, and Damian bro. Priest. 
But given the history of Vince McMahon, he probably got a kick out of this match. Of course. It's a shame that it came at the cost of making Damian Priest and The Miz look like lower card goofballs. <laughs> Number four, a literal eye for an eye match. Like I said. Was Vince watching Hostel when he thought of this idea? How else would he get an idea of two men trying to take each other's literal eye out for entertainment? Now, this is Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. These two don't need stupid gimmicks like this. Granted, I forgot this. Yeah, this was in the pandemic era, but they did have some people there in the audience. Um, but even then, it's still, this was still not good. Just let them go out there and wrestle. But 2020 was a weird period for wrestling in general as COVID-19 impacted the entire world. This forced WWE to think out of the box. And while the Boneyard and Firefly Funhouse match was entertaining really and different, not all ideas were on the same level. No. The Rey Mysterio Seth Rollins feud was solid in execution, but it was hard to take this match seriously. The moment that Rey Mysterio got his eye literally popped out was even worse. The effect was laughably bad and killed the seriousness of the feud. <laughs> Hopefully this was the... <laughs> My bad, he did have, he already had the, I forgot, he already did have like that little patch because Seth had tried to gouge out his eye uh, prior to this match, so, but that just looks awful, bro. First and last time an eye for an eye match ever happened. I don't want to see this ever Number again. five, throwing your opponent off the roof of a building. Mm -hmm. So we discussed how WWE has a thing for attempted murder. In fact, it wouldn't be a surprise if Vince had dreams of killing his employees in his sleep. Nevertheless, the pandemic era of WWE uh. was insane. While the company should be applauded for trying something new, the 2020 <laughs> version of the Money in the Bank ladder match wasn't so great. There were plenty of ridiculous and eye-rolling moments. Why is Ray always in... Have y'all ever wondered? Ray be just getting the, the short end, no pun intended, of the stick when it comes to just certain situations, matches. We just watched this man supposedly get his eye gouged out. And then this, I forgot... They fucking threw him off the roof of a building. Essentially, he should have died. <laughs> what is going on, bro? So, but the most egregious ah! was the them throwing Rey Mysterio and Alistair Black ah! off the roof of WWE HQ. Now look, obviously, Black and Mysterio landed on a pile of cushy marshmallows down below, but this was still attempted murder. Worst off, this wasn't treated as a serious angle. Mysterio and Black were perfectly fine the next day. <laughs> Y'all don't understand how funny that is, bro. I didn't ever watch this match live. I didn't care to. But just seeing the clips, I was like, wait, did, did Baron Corbin just kill Rey Mysterio? <laughs> oh, my gosh, bro. Oh, poor Rey, man. <laughs> It's hard enough to believe that two wrestlers can survive being tossed off the roof of a huge building, but to have them no sell that moment makes wrestling come across as extremely fake. Now I know that we live in a world where kayfabe is dead, but how can fans invest in a match that's billed as dangerous if they know for certain that element of danger doesn't exist? Once these guys are in the ring, there still needs to be a level of believability that allows fans to buy whatever WWE is selling between those ropes. Number right. 6. Face on Fire if you haven't noticed, WWE has a thing for spooky nonsense. Mm -hmm. Take Kane versus The Undertaker in 2010. There's no denying the Hall of Fame career that both men have had, but this latest chapter in their feud was a massive misfire. It started interesting with Kane even pulling out a strong performance in his search to find his missing brother, but then it all went downhill when their matches began. The mm -hmm. 2010 Hell in a Cell match was easily the worst of their feud. It was slow and plodding, and this being the PG era, the lack of color hindered it even further. However, what made this such a terrible match was a god-awful ending. Paul Bearer turned on The Undertaker by flashing a small light in his face. Mm -hmm. It was an extremely ridiculous <laughs> moment as a light. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> a light. <laughs> My weakness. <laughs> light was supposed to be something supernatural, but nobody bought that moment for one second. It made the Hell in a Cell match end on a cartoonish note and took Kane versus The Undertaker in a very bad direction. Number seven, The Fiend is burnt to a crisp. This one too. The Fiend is one of the best characters in modern WWE, but it's also an example of the worst parts of WWE. Vince McMahon never found a proper way to use The Fiend, and the character's final months leading into WrestleMania 37 simply wasn't good. He nope. was in a seemingly never-ending feud with Randy Orton. In the middle of this feud, these two had a Firefly Inferno match, and now Inferno matches don't particularly have a history of being great. No. They're not exactly on the level of Kennel from Hell match or even a Punjabi prison match, but no one has ever praised an Inferno match as something truly great. Yeah. That was no different with this match. It was sports entertainment at its finest, and not in a good way. 
But what pushed this bout over the edge was the ending. Yeah. Randy Orton winning the match was fine, but WWE couldn't help themselves as they wanted to go out with a bang. Yeah. So how do you do that? Well, have Randy Orton burn the Fiend to a crisp. Randy Orton doused him in gasoline and set the Fiend on fire. It was an asinine moment that further took you out of the Orton Fiend feud. In 2020, Rey Mysterio's eye popped out and Baron Corbin threw two men off a building. But this <laughs> moment was the most egregious out of all of them. The Orton Fiend rivalry. Because you could tell it was just a dummy. It wasn't really real. And I'm like, man, they they love trying to murder people. <laughs> In WWE, it's always been like that, but damn. It was already bad, but it took it to another level of terrible. Number eight, John Cena loses because of demonic possession. Hocus Pocus finished number 284. <laughs> a wrestler loses because of a demonic child. The whole layout of John Cena vs. Bray Wyatt wasn't good. The psychology of the match saw Cena at a severe disadvantage mm -hmm. as he had to fend off an entire family. Now, the problem with this is that the pinfall option was also available. John Cena looked like a complete fool by continuously trying to escape the cage. <laughs> Hopper and Rowan were outside waiting for him. The former WWE champion pinned Wyatt at WrestleMania clean, so why couldn't he just do the same thing here? Yeah. Not only did the match make Cena look stupid, but it also made Bray Wyatt look weak. Despite his best efforts, there were several occasions where Cena had the match won. Then someone had the bright idea for a distraction finish. This time, it's due to a demonic child singing. Uh, yeah, I remember. Uh, I, I getting, I'm, I'm cringing just, just from watching that. I'm like. Uh, I'm cringing. Cringing. They didn't have to do this. While the finish was creative, it was nonsensical. And yeah. it took away from what made the original Wyatt family so terrifying. Bray Wyatt's cult was menacing and compelling when it was grounded in realism, but the supernatural elements just made him and the group feel like cheap C-level horror movie villains. It was an awful finish that did more harm than good to Bray yeah, Wyatt. Didn't need to do Number that. nine, Seth Rollins tries to kill the fiend. Oh, Attempted again. murder never goes out of style in WWE, of course. at least under Vince McMahon's era. What made this so egregious is that it caused a freaking DQ in a Hell in a Cell uh, match. A balls on Vince to go through with this booking is outstanding. This feud kills Seth Rollins as a babyface and was also another example of how terrible the fiend was booked. Yep. A creative tried to paint him as an invincible monster, but that only made his matches lack any suspension of disbelief because WWE booked him too strong in the beginning. Yes. You think Vince would have learned his lesson about booking disqualifications in Hell in a Cell matches nope. after the backlash he received a year prior, but it seemed like the former CEO got a kick out of pissing off the fans during this period. The match wasn't particularly great to begin with, but it was never on the level of terrible. Until the finish, this finish left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. Going through the history of Hell in a Cells before this, fans have seen a lot worse than what Seth Rollins did. And even yeah. if they didn't, this is a no disqualification Cation match. match yeah. It ruined some of the Fiend's momentum, wiped out any that Seth Rollins had, and it turned off longtime fans who were done with Vince's booking. Let's hope that Triple H never gives us an ass nine moment like this ever again. I, I, I'm, I'm willing to bet we will probably won't have to deal with nothing that horrible again. Hopefully. But there you have it, folks. The most unreal moment. Yeah, this was a good one, man. This was definitely a good one. And I'm sure there's plenty of other moments where you're just like, <laughs> wait a minute, that that definitely didn't happen. But comment down below, let me know some of the most egregious moments where, you know, you saw something on WWE television or maybe even WCW or AEW where you was just like, come on, guys, we know that really didn't happen there. <laughs> let me know down below if it wasn't in this video. But I appreciate all the love support. Road 2. 150k, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you next one. Peace.